So I'm put this down here. So thanks for taking time out of your Thursday to, to join me for this, for the, our, our late lunch look at uh, printing dictionaries um, and what options you are. Um, we're going to talk about uh, printing with print as the you know, standard old yield faithful, then printing to the web, or publishing to the web, and then through the apps, like uh, particularly the dictionary app builder. Um, this all depends on your having Flex installed. Um, for this demonstration, we're going to be using Flex 3.12. I know Flex 9 is coming out. It's in beta, and hopefully the live will be soon, but we're going to use Flex 8 right now. Um, it also requires you're using Pathway. Pathway is the, like an add-on that you can use to print to um, make – to print to ODT files, LibreOffice. And once you get into ODT, then you can make some tweaks and layout and, and all kinds of things like that. Uh, we're also going to look at Dictionary App Builder, which is in the same class of things as Scripture App Builder and Reading App Builder. It's what we can use to take um, lift files coming out of Flex and to put on the Android. And I'm gonna demonstrate that on my phone. And then we're, lastly, we're gonna look at Webinary, which is um, our online dictionary sharing platform which is really kind of a I kind of view it as a cultural portal it's my way of saying it because you can link a lot of things so I intend this to be incredibly informal so if we have questions please let me know if, if I do this right I have about 30 minutes worth of presentation but I'm intending to ask for you to ask questions along the way um, so that that's how I work in a, in a classroom setting this is the first time I've ever done a presentation completely on zoom so we'll see how this goes um, it's first time for me. Right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to Flex, and we're gonna use my Tide example dictionary first, and a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not a linguist. I'm a computer guy who tried to make a dictionary in Flex so I can learn how to use the software. So don't look too hard at the phonetic description. I know it's wrong. Uh, the Tide spelling is probably accurate because I copied and pasted it from somebody somewhere. But beyond that, it's, it's flex. So just pretend it's me doing the best I can. All right, so uh, a bit of a look around just in case you're not familiar with flex. I know this group largely is. So you have your list of entries. And then when you click on a particular entry, you get the entry view over here. And, or you can click on, unclick this box to, to show a smaller list. But what I really want you to see is this view on the top where my cursor is. This is actually a view of what the entry would look like in the dictionary that you've currently configured. So we're going to spend some time in Flex looking at the dictionary configuration tool, which is what a lot of people is not use very often, but it's, it's kind of important for this. So to get to the dictionary configuration tool, I'm going to click on, uh, make sure I'm following my notes here. All right. Uh, tools, configure. Actually, let's do it this way. So over here on the left is dictionary. And then we kind of wait, and then it'll show up. And also, I'm doing this on the fly, which means um, there are likely to be software glitches and errors pop up. It's because that's the way things work. And I'm using what like the cooking shows call the magic oven. I've got some things prepped. I'm going to click a button, and then we're going to pretend it magically happened, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, uh, because some of these things take a while. Um, so, so this is the the dictionary as it would look if you were to um, Look at all the entries. Um, so you can see the, the tie and then the gloss. But how do I configure this? So I'm tools, configure, dictionary. Okay, so here again we see this is that same view when you click on the list of entries. And, and you can see the, the different options of views you have. So I can scroll through different things. So we'll get into how you can use them later. But right now we're in the Lexeme based. And so you can pick and choose things you want to show. Like if I want to, to remove the headword, now all of a sudden there's no headword. That would not be a good option for dictionary, but I'm just showing you that it's there. Another option you have, like, and I don't know if this is the, the correct way or the incorrect way to do it, this is the way I did it. So I started out with IPA, or my best understanding of IPA, and I made a writing system for IPA for Thai, and I have it under the, as a lexeme, or as a, a, an al, as a vernacular writing system. If I want that to show up, 
I need to make it available to, to be seen. Um, and of course, this, that particular, uh, of course, oh, Kirk Person, okay. I'm gonna add Kirk's joining us. Well, that's nice, it popped right up. That's, that's new. Good, I'm gonna go back to Tools Configure Dictionary. All right. Apparently that didn't show up like I intended, which is, ah, because I have to hit the checkbox here. In, uh, in, as I was saying, in Configure Dictionary, you can turn things on, turn things off. So I wanted the IPA to show up. So I, I, if I want it off, I removed, I can uncheck the boxes. Um, so what else I wanted to show? Uh, so that's hiding. And also, so the, there's a general consensus or a convention for the way you mark things. So if I want to put, you see down here the bef be before, between, after? If I want to put um, the, the slashes to bracket my, um, my phonetic description, it just put it before and after. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little dot. Do you see the little dot next to the slash? That little dot indicates a space. I'll put a whole heap so you can see it. So you can see all those dots and you can see the, the, the entry moving up here. Those dots don't appear anywhere except down in this little box. They're just so you can see it's there. And this has been uh, the configuration tool. A couple years ago, they put a lot of love in it because they recognize that um, there are a many, as many dictionaries as there are in the world, there are opinions on the proper way to have them formatted. So people want to have spaces, not enough spaces. They want to have this thing to be up, you know, smaller, bigger. They want things in different locations. So this is trying to be highly customizable so you can add these. And so I wanted to show also that you can move things around. So let's say you see the up and down arrow here. Let's say I wanted my, for whatever reason, I thought it was good and proper for my phonetic description. I'm gonna to be at the very end. I just move it down. And it goes, I, I, firstly, I can't drag it down to the bottom. I have to go all the way down. So now my phonetic description is at the end. It can't go after minor entry. I'm gonna remove that because I don't want it. Actually, that's not why that's there. So do you, do you see how you can move things up and down? All right. All right, so, do, 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 okay. All right, so, so that, that is the, the dictionary configuration tool on how you, what you can have presented in your view. All right, um, and you can have as many views as you want for, for as many different publication types. So um, I have, a, there's the three that come with flex. There's the hybrid, alexium based and root based. I've made a new one called webinary because with, with electronic publication, you have more options. Like on webinary, um, you can include audio, but it's, I don't know that anybody's invented the way to make an audio, well, I guess funny ways of, you can't make an audio on a print book but you can with webinary. So you can include, if you've got MP3 files of your words, you can add those to webinary and I'll show that later. So I've made a view called webinary and you can see that it's a little different. So I've, you can actually, so in my example of webinary, I've actually got my phonetic description to be a different color. I'm just, just monkeying around. I'm not sure that you would actually do that. You know, I, I, I'm not one for style, so I don't know what, what is useful or not, but I'm just showing that it can be done. Um, so you can also, oh, so head word. okay. So if you're clicking around, you kind of get lost or like, what is all this stuff? Like I actually do not know what this thing is. I can, with this yellow highlight, I can click on things and it'll show it to me. Like here's pronunciation. Ah. Uh, media. So here's Lexing form right here. Of course, it's not working. Oh, that's counterintuitive. I'd forgotten. When it's white, it'll show you the highlight. But when the it, it's that's counterintuitive to my thinking. But it's just the way it is. All right. So when it's white, you can click on things and find it. So you can if you can find where it is. I think Scott, that last bit, the the extra word and. I think that's the gloss rather than the definition. 
like that shows up in mine as well. Oh, so in sense, I've got, uh, but, uh, I gotta have some senses. Yeah. I, when I, yeah, it gets, I, I kind of get lost in here sometimes. Yeah. I haven't ever looked in there, but I know on mine it's, it's, I can tell by what it says that it's the uh, gloss okay. rather than the definition, but could be but why you I, don't see it in the view i think i can get there by doing this hit the okay button and you'll see this do do a change yeah this is not a i'm just i think i can right click here ah of course configure i was hoping Oh, well. Yeah, I uh, see, I wasn't practicing with the word war, so I don't know what that's for. <laughs> Sorry. It's in there somewhere. We can, we can huh, figure but it out. Only, only that one has it. The other words don't have that extra. You know, that could be a complex form. No, I don't want to get, you know, or you can just do this. Uncheck, uncheck, and you just uncheck things till it's gone. Pictures, ah, it's a th caption. Why do I have a headword and a gloss for a picture? I have no idea. I'm with the cancel button. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna remove that without just, leaving, just looking at everything. That is a new one on me. All right, maybe I can go back to that word Songkran, why is that called war? Yeah, this don't yeah don't look don't trust my English dictionary uh, Thai dictionary for anything. Songkran is the word for oh, war. Oh, 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 okay. Did I have a picture? Hmm. Oh well, I didn't even have a picture, so yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So. Um, any questions about the dictionary configuration tool? My, my, my goal is to try to show you that things are there and kind of how they work, not to become, have you be experts on something in 10 minutes. Any, any more questions about that? Okay, good. All right, so, so that's how you configure a, a, the way a, an entry is gonna look in, in, a, in a dictionary. Go back here, tools, configure, dictionary. I'm gonna change this back to my Lexeme-based. Apply, okay. The next question is, what words do you actually want to include in your dictionary or in your publication rather? I'm gonna step away from using the word dictionary. I wanna use publication because there are many. Um, so can you think of some examples of why you might make some word lists or some audiences? Bible dictionary versus uh, children's dictionary. Right. Yeah. Same ideas? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, those are the kind of things I thought of. Um, and also, I thought of a, uh, in, the, um, in the IT office, we made a food dictionary, words with pictures. So a food dictionary. Um, I don't know why my word architect is in my food dictionary, but hey, strawberry, that makes sense. Architect, I must have made a mistake somewhere along the way. Or unless I'm designing food, but hey, whatever. So um, the, the two kinds of, the, the print and webinary, they take advantage of your entry as you've configured it and the filters that you have. I actually, if I wanted to show entries that actually had a reversal, I want to show non-blanks, and I also wanted to show publishing in, so I, I've set my, my flex up to have three publication types, but I could have like a medical dictionary, uh, uh, a publication for plants and animals, that sort of thing. So I want to show in my example here, things actually have a reversal and are in my food dictionary. And that still shows the same 14, because somewhere along the way, I messed up and, in, and put my uh, 
architect, no, not a family entry. You have to have some publications. And I think that's just a list in publications. So I've got four public encyclopedic. I just put, I made a, a, a publication called encyclopedic and I checked every box. So any bit of information I have on the word is going to come out in this. It's, it's everything I know that I put in flex. My example publication is just that. It was just an example. And then food is food. And these are just labels. There's no bearing. It's not, gonna, it's not tied to semantic domain. It's not tied to anything. So that's why I can have architect and food. It just it doesn't know. And main dictionary is what comes with flex. And every word you get, enter, is added to main dictionary by default. That's just the way it works. So I'm going to go back to lexicon. And I'm going to go to file. Upload the webinary. And actually, I should show you how you add words to, to a lexicon. It's more to the word to a publication. It's more you actually have to remove them because it'll add, it adds them by default to everything. So in publish in underneath the entry, it exists several different places. There's an item called publish in pronunciation. Uh, uh, yeah, that's in multiple places, um, but publish pronunciation in this is the example. Actually, it's at the bottom, the very bottom here. Um, it's off screen. This is publish entry in these dictionary options, main uh, main dictionary example publication. I clicked a little ellipses, and I have a choice. So this word, chicken, I don't want it in my example publication. Uh, I don't want it in my main dictionary for whatever reason, but I do want it in food. And we'll take it out of encyclopedic just for example. So I hit the OK button. And now, so now if I want to go to uh, publish to print dictionary, I would go to file, export, and I'm going to print this, the pathway. I mentioned that before. Pathway is something that doesn't come bundled with Flex. You have to go out to the SL website and download it. And it is its own standalone little program that you can configure, which I've never seen anybody do, or you just accept it as an add-on as it is, and you click on export to it. And you click export, and you fill in some information that it wants. Like it wants to know a, uh, a title. I'm gonna call this uh, example Thai English reversal. And same here, description, Thai English. Um, give it the copyright information, it wants to know that. Uh, front matter, I'm just gonna give it the title. Uh, processing options, I'm gonna have it do both the configure dictionary, which is the view I'm, I'm presenting, and also the reversal. And then I'm gonna hit the OK button. And it's gonna do some stuff. And since this is a small one, a dictionary of 14 entries is, is easy. So I'm just going to do it live. But I've seen dic dictionaries of like a, uh, four or 5,000 entries. It takes a while. Uh, fine, hit the OK button. But this is my sample English Thai dictionary. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking uh, hit the button, go get coffee kind of a while. Um, because it, it's going through some macros. So you can see that um, here's my, my words. My, I have, this one has a picture. We've got the copyright. And my wife informs me that's the wrong kind of cabbage for this entry. But, but it's there. You can see it. That's okay. Um, so once you get it into ODT, you then can use Microsoft Word or LibreOffice to edit it. Like, so it doesn't know. Like I'm helping someone else with a dictionary and we're printing it and when it runs the process, it'll put the, head, the heading, the, the letter heading at the bottom of the page and then the entries will start underneath that on the next page because it, it can't know. So you have to go through and then, you know, hit the enter button and kind of shift it down and do some cleanup along the way, typesetting type things. So, um, so this is one option. And then when you are done with this, when this is the way you want it, you can take some like some um, text material on the front end, like describing the dictionary, 
and then bundle it all into a PDF and take it to a print shop, like a local print shop for an example, like a kid's dictionary. Or you can then um, uh, go to like a, a print on demand place. There's a place here called S Snowfall Press, someplace like that to, to get, a, get a print run made. But this is an example of a, a print dictionary. And you can see it put the reversals on the, on the bottom. So here, you know, beard, businessman, businessman, uh, he must be a hungry dude from a cooking dictionary. Uh, cabbage, cherry, chicken. Um, so, so these are things that you can do. So this is print to the paper, or, or some people would say print to dead tree. Um, or you put it to PDF and you can pass it around. Um, so this is a print option. And again, this was an entry of 14 examples, so it didn't take very long. Yes, Linda. Uh, at the top, I saw the, um, in the Thai version, the uh, sound. You can click on and get a word. Is that true? In this I version? am surprised that's there. Like chicken. Chicken. Yeah, yeah that shouldn't work. Oh. It's because in my, huh, yeah, that's a flaw. So in okay. my, sorry. no, 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 it's good. So in, in my entry view, I've got the pronunciation showing. So yeah. the macro passed the symbol for the thing and it's not smart enough to know that it can't pass the thing so it should remove the symbol so that's me having to go back in and go and configure the dictionary not this particular dictionary the lexeme dictionary not to have that or if i want to have that for some things make a new view called print probably what i would do and configure the print and send that up that's probably what i would do yeah, but thanks for pointing that out yeah, all kinds of things. I haven't helped with too many dictionaries. So um, most of what I learn about these things, I learned by stumbling on going, oh, wow, that's interesting, as with most of us. All right, so that is print to the dead tree, print to paper, print to PDF, or getting it into some electronic standard format. Uh, the next thing I want to show you in progression is Webinary. And that comes in sequence because Webinary uses the same view. Um, so I'm going to, so when you go, uh, so here's my, my dictionary again, I get to webinary by clicking on file dictionary, but I'm just using it as an example. So going back to webinary, file, upload to webinary, you have to pick the publication you want. So I'm going to use my example publication and you have to pick the view you want So remember I made a, a view called webinary because I want to have the, the audio with it. And I did that funny thing with pronunciation with a different caller just to show that you're not bound. You can. And I'm going to be uploading, if I do this, I'm going to be uploading 13 entries, 13 dictionary entries and 14 reversals. I think it's because chicken is the reversals in the, in, in the publication, but I'm not going to remove that. So because it's only 13 entries, I'm going to hit submit. If this were a big one, it would take a while. So I'm going to hit submit and it's um, getting all the pictures and it's uploading. Now, the thing you need to know about both Webinary and Dictionary App Builder, which we'll get to in a minute, is it doesn't know what to do with WAV files. So if you have a lot of, if you want to have audio for your entry, like to hear it sounded out or hear it, um, hear it to hear it as a, in a sentence, it's got to be an MP3 format. It can't handle WAV. So you can actually see up here that Webinary is warning me that it's excluded these words, the audio files from webinary. So I had a word for the, the, an audio file for cherry, but it's wave and family and funeral leg smoke. These are all wave, but it is, it's excluded them because webinary can't handle it. So if I were really going to do this for real, I would go through and pick my words I want to have audio for and then get MP3 versions of them. And audacity can do that for you. Could probably even convert them in bulk if you wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to go to my webinary examples. So this is my webinary. I, I've already pre-recorded it or pre-brought it up. So here is my cabbage entry. And I'm going to click my cabbage word. I, I don't know if you can, I think you're going to be able to hear this. Did you guys hear that? So that was my... Thai teacher of several years ago, slowly saying galampli. So I, 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 got, I got recorded it for things. So I was just trying to show you that with Webinary, 
you're not bound by the rules of print. You can make it multimedia enriched if you want uh, with Webinary. So I've got, a, I've got a picture. Like when you're going to print a print dictionary, you probably only get so many pictures, even thumbnail black and white, because that costs money. But with Webinary, it doesn't matter. So I can put a lot more pictures up if I wanted to. Um, it just depends upon what you think is helpful. Um, and I've also got the, I uploaded the reversal. So you can see, here's my English. I can search for, you know, go through the bees and here's beard, bowl, businessman. Um, there you go. I'm going to, so that's what webinary, what my, my example dictionary and webinary. I'm going to show you some other examples of webinary that other people have done. So uh, this is the webinary page, wrong one. Ah, test ISO again. Ah, okay. So this is Bunong. This is Mimi and Didi. So uh, he's, he's uh, Bunong in C Cambodia. Uh, you can browse, find a list of words. So here's his words, uh, Bunong over here, English. And then I think this is going to be Khmer back on the back side. That's just where he chose to put it. You can see up here that Webinary supports uh, localization. So English is what the user interface is now. Um, one of these is, that's Khmer, and this is Bunong. So if you're willing to go through the process of translating the strings, you can get Bunong. Mm. Yeah, so that's Bunong. That was quick. I'm going to go back to English. Uh, another option, another example. This is Kaya, and you can see Kaya, they did a lot of stuff to make it more cultural. They've actually changed the background to include a, a pattern that they've got. You can click, I mean, it's a website, you can link anywhere. So they've got links to a Kaya website. I'm gonna open this. So you can, you know, this is, mm. so that's their Kaya, this is a, a Kalam made website. So you can, you can link to other things. If your group had a YouTube channel of, of some of their cultural stuff, you can link to the YouTube channel. Um, you can use, so this is browse Kaya to Myanmar. This is trilingual. So you can browse Kaya, English, Myanmar. So uh, it looks like this is Latin. So that's like the, the Kaya, the English, and the Burmese. So you can really do a lot of things with it. And some other times they have, I've seen, so here's the that PDF. If you wanted to make a PDF of your dictionary, you can put it up here and you can download it. They've actually made a, a dictionary app, which we'll get into. And one way you can, if you don't want to put it in the Google Play Store for whatever reason, you can make it as a downloadable thing here. Um, people can download it. And they've also got a Kaya keyboard. They've put it up here so people can download it and install it. Um, there's some standard stuff. They've got a photo journal. So this is, they, they, they want, for whatever reason, these pictures were important to them as representing something. So they've got some pictures of uh, some Kaya at a, 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 rapid, a word collection workshop. But you can do all kinds of things. You can have examples of uh, pictures of a wedding, pictures of any number of things, because it's, it's a website. You can do what you want. So you can, you can make it just a flat dictionary online, or you can make it a cultural thing. Um, yeah. So that's what I wanted to show about Webinary. Any questions about that? Yes, Linda? Uh, I, I, I just said it's cool. It's yeah. pretty impressive. So those are good examples. Yeah. All right. So the, the next thing and the last thing I want to show, I'm going to get myself set up for it here, is uh, on the phone. All right. So... So again, um, in Flex, close this. Um, using Flex as the starting point, we're doing Dictionary App Builder last because it doesn't really rely on the view. It, um, if you go to File in Flex and then Export, you're going to export Lyft, uh, lexical, lexicon interchange format. Now there are two kinds of Lyft files you can, ex you can export. There's the filter lexicon, which it uses the filters that you've created in Flex. So if I were to do the filtered lexicon, it would only show these 14 entries. 
but it would, it would send every bit of information I have. So it's almost like the encyclopedic. You can't say, unfortunately, you can't say send these entries, but only this information. It sends everything. Now, Dictionary I Builder only does so much with some of it, but it sends it all. Or you can do the full lexicon, which is everything, every entry you have. So if I were to turn off all my, um, all my filters, my, my dictionary checks in at 914 words. Um, and a lot of them are junk, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, so I would not do the full, I would do a filtered. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you since it's the, at least the 14 one, since it's easy. So I'm just gonna click export. And then you tell it where you want it to go. And I'm gonna show you, um, here's, I, I'm gonna export it to a, to a folder that already exists because I've done this more than once. So in this, um, imagine that I've made some changes and I wanna update an app. So I'm gonna lift, export, lift my, my filtered lexicon to the same location as before. So I hit the okay button, uh, filtered eh, on the right location actually. And then it's gonna say, there's already a project in this folder, okay to overwrite, which is what I wanna do. So then it's already done. Now, again, if there were a lot of entries, it would take a while. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna switch over to Dictionary App Builder. Okay, so this is Dictionary App Builder. Um, you have the dictionary, the dictionary App Builder program can compile multiple dictionaries. So you don't have one instance of Dictionary App Builder for every um, dictionary. You have one for a bunch. So I'm gonna minimize these things. Uh, rats. All right, so I'm going to minimize this. So I have my two that I wanna work with, my Thai dictionary, which is my full, and my filter dictionary. So I just updated my filter dictionary. Well, I'll show you this. So this contains information you need to know about the app. Um, it's the name of the file, some other stuff that we get into later if you wanna know, if you wanna do it. And here's the version of it. So just like your, your Android apps, when, when you get an update, it's checking for the version number. So if, if I were to not change this version number but do an update, the phone would ignore it because it's, it's looking for the version number change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Lexicon. Uh, Dictionary App Builder knows that this lift file is changed. So I'm gonna update from source. You wanna update? Then I'm gonna go back to app, make this a two, then save, and then build my Android app. So, but I'm not gonna, that takes a while, I'm not gonna show how to do, do that. But the, the Android, the app, you have some, a fair amount of options. So you have colors, like, uh, like overarching color themes. So I want it to be blue, purple, um, dark red, purple. You have the option of uh, images. So I just chose the, one of the basics default images that came out of Dictionary App Builder. So if you've got a, can get a, if you have a, someone, an artist who can make an image that represents your culture, something that you want to show in the Google Play Store, you can have them make it and you can add the image here. So you could have a, a, a picture that says, when someone, when a so person looks at it and says, ah, oh, that's so, or Kamai, or you can have the word so dictionary or whatever in Thai or Thai script or whatever. You can, you can make this be whatever you want. I just chose a, a basic, one of the defaults. Um, yeah, Let's see, there are fields. Uh, Dictionary App Builder recognizes that, that I had some custom fields. I didn't want those shown up, so I unchecked them. One thing it does ask is for information about the app, and I just type, titled example Thai filter dictionary. That's not very exciting, but this is your chance to explain what the app is, what it's used for, um, if you have questions, who do you contact, those sorts of things. Um, that's images. Other thing about the app is audio you have to tell it what to do with audio. So it's not enough to have the audio in your flex lexicon. Excuse me, you also have to add it to the app. 
and you can either add it to the app by bundling it together or you can give it a third source, like someplace on the internet. So go here and download it. Um, I haven't fiddled with that too much, but I know it can be done and then we can figure out if someone wanted to do it. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do now is show you my phone. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing. Actually, I'm gonna try this. New share, advanced, second camera. Let's see what happens. Do you see my phone? I have been trying to get a way to show Android phones on Windows, but it, it never, I've never really got it to work. So I could try, eh, do this. And even this is kind of weird. All right, so this is me doing, it's upside down to me. But so this is my regular Thai dictionary, and I've also got my Thai filter dictionary. You see the name up the top? So I can scroll down, up and down. There's, there's not very many in this one. Um, I can also do the English. And if I had a trilingual, I would see, like if I were doing uh, English Thai So or, or uh, the Kaya English Burmese, I would have Kaya English Burmese at the top if that's what I wanted. So I'm gonna click on cabbage with my example. And here's my, my Thai word pronunciation, the part of speech, and it's English cabbage, and here's my picture. And if I were to click this, you can hear the audio. And it also does the, ah, uh, come on. Okay, and so it has the audio, but that's just because I told it to do audio. Um, there are some quirks, like, um, I don't know how to get the second sound icon, but if you click that, that'll show the same audio. Um, and you can move back and right, up and down the entries. Or you can go back to the list and scroll up and down. Um, you have the option, if I got it set, to do settings. Uh, user interface keep screen. There is language in here somewhere. I'm trying to. I think I had this set to show. Maybe not this one. Maybe it's my tie. But tie settings. Language. Okay. So it's localizable, meaning you can have um, have the user interface be the language that you want it to be. I chose. I added this one. A dictionary app builder can do Chinese by default. It's bundled in. So I just changed it to Chinese just so you can see that it's doing Chinese. And you can see that not every screen, everything is translated. Um, but it's there. So you can see that some of the things. And so anything that you add the translation to will, will show up in that language. So you can have it um, English. So you can have it set to be whatever language you want to be by default. So if you wanted it, we'll go with, keep going with Kaya. So if you wanted it to be Kaya by default when it installed, it would be Kaya. Or if you wanted it to be, I'm gonna stop sharing the phone. Um, that's in, uh, where was it? Not here, it was interface. So use the current language of the device. If no translation exists, use English. So it'll use, like if you have a person who's Khmer and they've got Khmer on their phone and you have Khmer in the phone, in your app, it'll, it'll default to Khmer. Or you can say, no, uh-uh. We're going to go Portuguese first for whatever reason. I, I wouldn't recommend. The first option is the best option, I would think. And then you have it to default to whatever language. But if you wanted to add a language, um, these are the ones they can choose when they when they start out. Um, so the then the so once you have an app made and it works, the question then comes to how do you um, make it available? So I'm going to show. So then, um, like I think it was this one, it, it produces an APK file and you can download it and have it installed. That gets dicey because you're asking people to do some things that are inherently unsafe. 
you're asking them to turn off safety settings on your phone to, um, to install your app, which we trust us because we're not going to knowingly do anything bad. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a practice you kind of want to avoid if you can do it. Oh, um, a free love to our, our, to our Keyman people. You can actually put a link to, in here to Keyman if you wanted, Keyman language or keyboard, um, free plug. So, so you, can, you can pass around the APK file via download like this or via um, Google Drive or, or um, Bloom, or sorry, Bloom, or Dropbox, or a Bluetooth or SDK card. Um, that, those are common ways to do it. Or you can actually put it in the Google Play Store which works for most of us, except for some countries that block it. Um, so here is the Kachin dictionary up on the Google Play Store. Uh, this is actually hosted by a, a partnering organization. So we, we get them to put it up and they'll put it up for us. And you can install it on your phone. So you can say, you can, you can then say, go here to get the, 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 um, to get the app, which is the more, if this is the way you can do it, this is a more safe, a safer. Um, so, the, so this is a, a partnering organization. Uh, Webinary. Uh, so this is Webinary's Google Play Store. Uh, Webinary, in addition to hosting the, the, the uh, online app, uh, the uh, dictionary online, will also host our apps. So we can work with the same people to, to put the app up if you want to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions about this? All right. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. I wanted to, to kind of show um, the options, what they're there. And if you have more questions on how to actually to do it, the, the uh, configuration tool, we can get more in depth later, one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, but I just kind of wanted to, to get the ideas out there so people can see them. Um, if, if there are no questions, we're going to have to stop soon. Today's being what it is. I have, a, we have a hard cap for me. To, I have to leave soon. Um, but if you have any questions, um, please let me know. All right. Could, do you know who in our group has done any of these dictionaries that kind of has gotten experience that we could ask? Uh, the more detailed questions of, or? Yeah, so um, <laughs> you saw, I showed you the Bunong webinary. So mm -hmm. Mimi and Didi have done that. Uh, Lisa Cooper, who's actually intended to come, but she couldn't make it, um, has made an app and it's put it out there on a, through her groups. Her group has their own Play Store. So they've done it their own way, which is ideal, I think. So you could talk to Lisa about the app, um, the dictionary app. Um, yeah, Bill Hanna probably has done a dictionary. I talked to Craig about who's actually done print more recently, um, but I haven't seen too, known too many. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And then uh, Ryan Garman is our resident lexicography expert, lexicographer, coordinator, whatever the term we ascribe to him. So he'd be one to talk to you. All right. Well, thank you for taking time out of your Thursday to join me for an hour talking about dictionary publication. And if you have any more questions, please let us know and we'll be happy to help. Um, I can send all of you, if you're interested, uh, the, the information on how to get a hold of Verna, um, the, the webinar lady. Um, they've been quite helpful. Good. And if you could send the link to the recording as well, that would be great. Yeah, I'll send that. I'll send that out. I hope to have that out next week. If not, that'll be the week after. Yeah. Okay. So, Scott, this is for the um, um, Android. So, can we publish the dictionary using uh, Dictionary App Builder and publish it in iOS? Yes, you can. Um, iOS is, mm. I think the app will work the same. You have to give it the lift file. And then it'll, I think the, the, the controls are about the same. The only trick is getting it into the Apple store and um, Apple doesn't, these are uh, the term of art is template apps. Our app builders are called template apps. Basically you take the same template, you throw in information and now you have a new app. 
Apple mm -hmm. iOS doesn't like template apps. So like, so you can't have a template, you can't have webinary.sl host a bunch of iOS. So you actually have to have a Kaya org host the Kaya or another one org, like one org per app or a few, one act, one, two apps per org, something very limited. So okay. making the app is the easy bit. M getting the app distributed is the hard bit. Okay. For so let's say if, so let's say if um, we have a uh, um, relationship, um, a professional relationship with uh, a government institution, mm -hmm. then they can host the uh, dictionary and then whatever. We can just mirror everything here. That, yeah. would be, that would be the way. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. Um, there may be to take an. There may be a way to take the, the the files that you output, the project files that Dictionary App Builder creates for Android, and migrate them into iOS. So basically, the idea being you do it once and then you merge it. I think that's the intention, but I don't know how. That's require, so that's require another tool. It would require that there is an uh, there's an iOS version of uh, App Builder, Dictionary App okay. Builder. Okay. Um, I, have, I don't have that on my computer here. So I think you take the output files from Dictionary App Builder Android and then go to iOS. Maybe, maybe it's one way or the other. So I don't think you actually have to make, make them both at the same time. So another question is with the WebMundry SIL here that you're showing. So mm -hmm. is, um, is it web-based or um, how, how is this? So are you um, referring to, the, this is working? a, Webinary's Google Play Store. Are you referring to this? Or are you referring to their yeah, webinar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. What's showing now? Like a okay. list of uh, dictionary there. Yeah. Um, so these are available on both Webinary and also in Play Store. Uh, no. Uh, this is Webinary's Google Play Store. These are the Webinary apps. These are only available on the um, Google Play Store. Oh, hey, here's Brew. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. Carolyn, right? Yeah. So you can ask her. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. Um, and here's Kaya. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of, uh, there's not a lot, but there are some. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now.